It's interesting when you're watching TV and seeing so many chefs, because I seem to remember that when I first started on TV, I think I was the very first, you know, professional chef to have his full BBC series. And today, I suppose, I have a little bit of pride on watching chefs on TV. And the reason for that, many of them have worked for me. So if you look at some of the big names at the moment, Tom Kerridge, he worked for me for two years when he was first coming up through his training. Really good young lad in the kitchen. And I just am proud of them. I'm really proud to see that's a man now, a two Michelin star chef. So he has not only proved himself in the industry and in the professional with that professional status, but at the same time has enough personality in his, not only within himself, but within his food and to tell that story on TV. Another one is Nathan Outlaw, who worked with me uh, in London for a little while, another two Michelin star chef. Um, got his restaurant down in Cornwall. Again, another great talented, but one of my old boys. And that's how I like to look at them. And then you've got Gordon Ramsay, a great friend of mine now for, I don't know, 25 years or more, um, who, uh, okay, he can be a bit ruthless on the TV every now and again, but as a person, not only is he a true gentleman, um, but on top of that, um, he's still a three Michelin star chef. And I think um, people forget that. And I think he's proved more than proved himself as one of the great uh, British chefs uh, of all time. Um, and of course, good old Rick Stein, a man, again, that uh, been watching that man for years and years and years. And I like the honesty in the story he tells. So. Yeah, it's good to watch. I don't watch too many, you know, cookery programs, but if I've got one of my old lads on there, I like to watch it. And some, a couple of guys I've also mentioned there with Gordon and Rick, who I think are, are, are true greats in the industry. Do you know, there's lots of young chefs out there who want to become, you know, superstars overnight. And I always want to say to them, look, it takes an awful long time to actually find and, and discover your own style of food. And my sort of discovery was working with some great chefs over the years, um, you know, from, from my days working in Holland and then working for the likes of uh, um, Brian Turner, Michelin star chef that I worked with as his, as his right hand man back in the 80s. And if I take the influence he had on my food it was really quite phenomenal because what his food was about was about simplicity. It was making sure that nothing was ever overplayed with. It was about how to just draw the maximum flavors from each ingredient, how to then never over influence um, the, the, the main feature. And that was one thing that he taught. There is a main feature to every single dish. Our job is actually to support that, to add other flavors to other, another dimension that's going to do nothing but complement, but never take away from the, 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 that natural central flavor that uh, you're featuring. Um, and so looking at that and other chefs I had the opportunity to work with, I worked in France uh, with a three Michelin star chef for a small period and all this sort of thing. Taking all of their, their, their influence, taking all of their styles helped me develop my own. Some things you sort of agree with and you think, yes, definitely this I want to, that's offered a new education to my, to my palate and to my repertoire. At the same time, there are many other things that you feel, no, I'd rather ignore. But then that's how you look and learn. I think one of the saddest things in the industry at the moment, if I want to be ruthless and honest, is that young chefs now do want to become head chefs at the age of 22, 23. And there are many out there of that age who are head chefs of operations. What did I know at 22 and 23? And I think those chaps, I suddenly realized I knew very little. I thought I knew so much then, but then it's only now that you realize how little I'd experienced and how little I knew at that age. And so thank goodness I didn't try and run away with it at that point. I still wanted to learn and work with others. So I would say to any, everybody, don't rush your career away. It's not all about money and earning a bit more because you're a head chef. It's about if you, if you really want to become known, if you really want to become uh, a man or a lady, for that matter, respected within this industry and known within this industry, who's somebody who's added something, who has an influence, um, that takes time. 
it takes a lifetime of looking and learning. You know, since I left my college, you know, 40 years ago, I still, I've got still so much to look and, 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 and to look, see and learn about. Um, so I feel now it's about uh, chefs are predominantly influenced, not by the people they're learning from and working with. It's moreover from television programs and cookery books. Reading a story is one thing. Understanding that story and experience that story, experiencing that story is something else. Do you know, over the years, you know, many, many different chefs uh, have influenced my style of food, but also working in other countries, you know, particularly working overseas with my time, even my days back in, in Amsterdam, when I lived there, you know, I, I absolutely loved it. It was fantastic, some of the food that I was learning, because that was back in the late 70s, early 80s, when there was all kinds of food fashions. Food was changing quite dramatically. The, uh, you know, nouvelle cuisine and all this sort of thing that was going on. So that had quite an influence. Um, I think, uh, likewise, over here, learning about all of this sort of West Indian cookery with an influence I had from my stepfather, but then that has actually done nothing but grow and develop and recognize an awful lot more of it since, you know, being involved with uh, the Calabash here in Grenada. Um, and likewise, again, in the UAE, um, I'm learning so much about Middle Eastern cuisine, a food that I'd kind of ignored, if you like. Um, but it's, you know, now I'm learning so much every single year, and that's what I love about this industry. It is a continual education. Do you know what really inspired me uh, and why I wanted to, you know, have a restaurant uh, in, in the West Indies and here in the, the beautiful Caribbean um, was we did one year for the BBC when I was making all the TV series for the BBC, we did a Christmas special and that Christmas special was here in Grenada. And it was trying to show people that, you know, it's not always about roast turkey and Christmas pudding every single year. You can go to different parts of the world and enjoy different styles of food. So you can imagine, I mean, I was saying, yes, please, I'd love to go and, you know, film that, uh, that particular program. And it was great fun to do. Um, but I, I just fell in love with this island. I absolutely fell in love with it. But I did come back that following year, fell in love with the Calabash, fell even more in love with, with Grenada. And the great thing with getting to know, to know Leo, Leo Garbutt, who, who owns, uh, with his family, who owns the, uh, the Calabash, I just found him, you know, quite an inspirational man. He's a man who also had the same beliefs, the same strengths that I feel I have in this industry. And it is this uh, always wanting to do more, always wanting to offer more, always wanting to keep that our guests, which are our business, happy. And I thought, this is a man I'd love to work with. And hence the beginning of um, the Road Restaurant at the Calabash. There was an influence from my stepfather, John, a man I, I, I love and adore, who's been my stepfather for over 40 years. And he, um, he is from Jamaica. So, you know, I was also being taught uh, at a very young age, um, what West Indian food was really all about and what it holds and what values it holds and, and, and the story it tells. So that excited me as well. So, you know, obviously having that opportunity to, to come over here was really exciting. And then I've, I suppose all of that has helped with my decision of going into the UAE. I found myself, you know, opening a restaurant there. We opened then two restaurants. And then I found that business was just growing and growing. And now I'm involved with ve very many, many businesses, very many businesses out uh, in the UAE, within cinema groups, within supermarket chains, within hotels. You know, my business was just growing and growing. And I thought, that's it. You know, I just spoke to my wife one day and I said, we can't stay in London anymore because I'm making, it was probably eight to 10 trips per annum back and forth to the UAE and I was, this is getting out of hand because previous to that I was only doing two or three. So um, now we've turned it the other way around. We're now living in, in the UAE and I literally only make two or three trips back to the UK. So yeah, it's worked you know, nicely for us and business is continuing to grow. So um, I like to feel, fingers crossed, it was the, the right decision at that time. I think the new fashion started late last year, but I think 2019 is the big year for it, and that's probably vegan. 
because more and more people are wanting to become vegan, wanting to become as healthy as they, uh, as they possibly can, um, which, you know, there's not a bad thing at all. And I think that'll spread across the, the, the whole of the world. I really do feel that Middle Eastern food is going to become more and more fashionable. And I think you'll also probably see Middle Eastern TV cookery programs coming on uh, very soon. You know, it's certainly one I'd love to do. Um, because again, that would be part of, uh, part of an education. Um, and I'd like to think that classic dishes of old are going to find uh, a, a sort of a, uh, they're going to be refreshed with simplicity.